Well, hi there. I'm here today with a blue-eyed leucistic ball python. This is a super lesser ball python. But I'm really not here today to talk to you about blue-eyed leucistics. We will do that in the future because they're one of my favorite things in the world. But what I want to talk to you today about is a question I've had asked an, a number of times on several different videos. How do you convince your parents or another loved one in your home that you should get a pet reptile? And that is a big and difficult question. So I thought I would make a whole video just to talk about that because I, I hope it helps. I want to start off by saying if somebody in your home doesn't want you to have a pet reptile, they probably have some legitimate reasons or concerns. And it will be important that whatever their reasons are, you treat those concerns as real and legitimate. And, and you try to be understanding. Because if you just start out by saying, oh, you're just being dumb or stupid or that's unfair, uh, they're probably not going to listen to anything that you have to say after that. So I, I want to start out by saying no matter what their concerns are, treat them as fair and legitimate concerns. And most people will fall into one of two categories. Either they have a problem with reptiles or they don't think that a reptile is a good idea for you right now. So let's start with that first concern. They're concerned about reptiles. One concern, I mean, depending on the type of reptile you're talking about, if you're talking about a type of reptile that's actually dangerous, like a highly venomous snake or a giant snake or a crocodile or something, then they're just right. That's probably not a good idea for you to get one of those. That's probably not what you're proposing. But a lot of people don't know the difference. So one thing will be to help them learn a little bit more about reptiles. Uh, one concern people have sometimes is they, they think they carry diseases, and they really just don't. Uh, they can carry salmonella, which can make you fairly sick. Uh, if you wash your hands after you handle a reptile, that should never be a concern, and it's a pretty minor concern. You're a lot more likely to get that from chicken or eggs, things that you do bring into your home all the time. So Salmonella is a minor concern, but it might help for them to know about this. The, the truth is that reptiles aren't very closely related to humans, and as a result, they don't carry very many diseases that we can get. What they're probably more afraid of is that the animal will attack them and hurt them somehow. They may have had a bad experience or just been raised that way, and that's pretty common. People are often afraid of it, especially snakes, but even lizards and, and other reptiles in general. They're afraid that they'll attack them. As you can see, they're not very aggressive for the most part. Reptiles, very few of them want anything to do with you and, and they have no interest in coming after you or attacking you. And helping somebody gain a little bit of experience with real reptiles helps a lot. You might have them watch our other videos. Um, we would love that. And, and that will show them a lot of what it's like to interact with reptiles and see that they're not mean, nasty beasts. What would really, really help is if you could find a place where they could have some first-hand contact, like actual interaction, with the type of reptile you're interested in getting. It will be amazing what a difference this could make. This could, this could involve finding somebody who owns that type of reptile and, and going to see theirs. Uh, maybe you go to a, a pet store or a reptile expo or to the home of a breeder or to a breeding facility. These sorts of places would be a great place to take your friend or family member so that they can see real reptiles, they can see how they're housed and what care is going to be like for them, and mostly so that they can interact with that animal and see what wonderful things they are. The second concern is that a reptile isn't right for you. And in some cases, they might be right about this. And so if they're not right, what you've got to do is you've got to show them that they're not right. Show them that you are ready for a pet reptile. One thing that you can do that you're already doing is research. Research, research, research. Learn as much as you can. And, this would be my recommendation, let your family members know that you're researching it. Because a concern they're going to have is that this is something that you're interested in for a couple of weeks and you'll get it and then you'll lose interest in it and move on. If they can see that for the last two or three months or longer, you have been researching and researching and studying and studying on this animal, 
they're going to be able to see that maybe this isn't just a, a fleeting idea you had for a moment. Maybe this is something you're serious about, and you're taking it seriously, and so will they. The other thing that you can do during your research is write down the things that you're learning and make a plan. Make a plan of all the things that you're going to need in order to get your pet reptile, all of the things that it's going to take to take care of that reptile, what it's going to cost, how you're going to get the money, how you're going to get the time, and what you're going to do every day and every week to take proper care of that reptile. If they can see that you've made a plan and you've committed yourself on fully understanding what you're getting yourself into, they're going to be a lot more likely to say, yeah, I think you're ready. I would strongly recommend that you purchase everything that you're going to need for that reptile before you buy the reptile. There's a strong temptation as soon as you get enough money together to buy the reptile that you buy it, then you get home and you go, oh, now what? Now what do I do with this? And you like stick it in a little box somewhere and hope for the best. The truth is by the time that you can afford the enclosure, you won't have the reptile anymore for one reason or another. And that's a terrible thing that happens to a lot of reptiles. If you spend your money and your time preparing an incredible enclosure, for that reptile, when it comes time to actually get the reptile, I think your family member, your parents are going to be a lot more likely to say, well, you are completely ready, and, and I think you can do it. And on top of all of this, I would strongly recommend that you do a great job with any other responsibilities you have in the home. When you bring a reptile home, you are bringing home a new job, a new chore, a new responsibility. And if you are currently fulfilling all of your other chores and duties and responsibilities in your home, then there's a pretty good chance that your family members, your parents perhaps, will say, you know what, I do think this, that this person is you are ready for a pet reptile. But if you're not, if you're not fulfilling all of your, your current responsibilities, then your family members are going to know that as soon as this reptile comes in the door, what, what has happened is that they, not you, they have received a new job, a new chore and a new responsibility because just like your other jobs and responsibilities, you're not going to do this one. So show them through everything that you're doing that you are responsible and reliable enough to keep a pet reptile, help them with their concerns, and I think a pet reptile is very likely in your future. If you have anything you want to add to this, please feel free to comment. Uh, I, this is just my advice, but there's loads of great advice out there from all kinds of different people. If you have more questions, always ask questions. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Isn't that the greatest thing you've ever seen? A, a leucistic means it has no pigment at all. It's pure white, and its eyes are blue. Love them.